Hi, Tracy Lewis from Stuff and Things. I have my obligatory paper pumpkin driving home view, only this time I am the driver, so I can't really drive and have my paper pumpkin up there and film it at the same time. So this is me at my mailbox place, picking up our mail, and here was my wonderful special surprise with my Stampin' Up! paper pumpkin for February. Now I get to go home and uh, get to videoing, so stay tuned. Good morning, it is Paper Pumpkin Day, and this is the second time that I have had snow on Paper Pumpkin Day. Yesterday I picked up my Paper Pumpkin, and this morning, this is what has greeted me, and it is coming down even thicker and harder than it was just 15 minutes ago. So, I look forward to having this awesome view all day while I create all my alternatives for Paper Pumpkin February. Stay tuned. All right, I'm finally working on paper pumpkin. I had to spend the morning finishing up my storage of my existing stamps, dies, and embossing folders. I hate to have unfinished projects going on. So here we have February, and it is called Wildflower Wishes. My mom has already texted me. She got hers yesterday. She says it's beautiful, so let's just open it up and see. So there's going to be a special five-year anniversary for Paper Pumpkin in order to receive the March kit as well as a free gift. You need to subscribe by March 10th. So if any of you are interested in this and have any questions, you can certainly email me at sales at stuffandthings.com and um, I will help in any way I can answer any questions you might have. So we've got Garden Green for the Stampin' Spot and some nice bold text with florals. I see, boy that's hard to read, huh? I think, ah, it says Your Awesomeness, that one right there. Hello. I'm going to try to remove this and see if I can read it. So much. Hello, sweet. Big time. And then the large bolds are thank you, friend, and celebrate. I see adhesive, dimensionals, tiny pearls, a natural twine, really pretty envelopes with, it looks like photograph flowers for the inside. Card bases, crumb cake looks like. We have some focal sheets, matte layers. Three different styles it looks like. So we have stripes and a little diamond pattern and a little floral pattern. I see some sticky die cuts. Nope, non-sticky. Long, full-length die cuts. And since the die cuts overlap, there might be something we can do with the leftover pieces. So there's what the leftover piece looks like, and here's what that die cut looks like. Another shape of die cut. I'm taking these out because it's hard to tell exactly what we're looking at. So there's another shape. And then these are very thick sticker die cuts with floral. It's 
some words. Friend, friend, friend. Uh, more sticker die cuts. I see some vellum leaf sprigs. This one's almost off, so I will take it off. A little bit bent. So that's what it looks like. Celebrate. A thank you sheet. More little sprigs in vellum and vellum tag layers. Now, the fun part, let's see what this is all supposed to look like. There are three designs. Thank you, friend, and celebrate. Oh, and that's what these are for on the envelopes with lines where you fill out the address. That's clever to actually provide us some, some good decorations for the envelopes. And now I'm going to cut everything apart and I will do a quick create while I'm already thinking ahead to what I might do for alternatives. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And in the interest of time, and because all three of these are the exact same layouts, just three different words, I'm going to do the thank you. So I'm going to first do the stamping, and I'm using my straight edge along the break between the top and the bottom of the spot, which I have found is the easiest way to get these open. So I'm going to stamp the sentiment so much first. And we will set that aside to dry. And make sure we don't touch it because when you stamp dye ink on vellum. It's very slow to dry. I might even break out my heat gun to dry that. If I end up doing that, I will turn the camera off and do that on my own time. The next stamping project is on the mat.
that is my version of the card for the instructions. Now I will come back with some alternatives. All right, I have returned. I have four alts. These are the colors that I ended up using. And I picked the two different yellows because I was actually using two different um, floral elements. And then I also had a piece of the Daffodil Delight. So that's why I went with that lighter one on the, the last card that I did. So I decided today if you've watched my previous videos, I've used stamp other stamp sets that coordinate. I've used other dies that coordinate. And today, I limited myself to using some different mediums, which I will get into. And colored cardstock. I did not use any different um, dies. So, and very little other stamping options as you will see momentarily. So let's get right to it. The first alt that I created, I had to do the one where you used the letters. Let's see if I've got. So the thank you here has cut out letters. I had the thank you pieces left over. And that is the very first thing I did is I took and added the letters thank you onto the floral. And then I really wanted to stick with kind of a floral theme, but not make it too busy. So what I have is a, I believe it is not a current active embossing folder. It is a Stampin' Up! embossing folder. And I used the the green, which I just set the colors all aside somewhere. I'm not sure where I just swept them up to. This is always artichoke though. And I want to add these two pieces in the corners. And I'm going to pop this piece up with some dimensionals. So this one was fairly simple and I didn't stray too far from the basic design. All right, that concludes design number one. The color of pen I used for the thank you is Jelly Roll Metallic Brown, I believe they call it, or Metallic Sepia, perhaps. And it actually writes in a pretty light color. As you can see, it's a very light, almost like a, almost, light gold perhaps. So that's my more simple style completed. The second one was actually fun. I like the way the colors turned out. I used a different embossing folder this time. This is the Cuddlebug Swiss Dots and I've you can see I've kind of because I had to put the friend down I went ahead and attached the different pieces under it and then I went ahead and thought well I'll go ahead and put the the daisies on The word friend. Now I 
went with some new material, changing things up. So first I pulled out some supplies I have not actually used that are from Stampin' Up! and they are these masking templates. I call them stencils and I used for this one I used the diamonds and texture paste which I applied with a palette randomly after I stamped with the three different flower stamps. There's three different sizes of flowers, the large, the medium, and the small, and I randomly stamped the background. This is rose red paper, and I used rose red ink, so it's color on color. And then I've started and haven't finished roughing up the edges of the paper with my scissors. I made a fishtail banner. I'm going to pop it up. This is with Daffodil Delight. All right, that's the third one. Fourth one, I went with Dapper Denim and I made clouds. And when I put the clouds on with the texture paste, I actually used this stencil and used this and I flicked and swirled to make the clouds be puffy. So that's how I created that one. I am not going to texture the edges on this one. I'm going to leave them smooth. The sentiments that I used on this, I kind of had a few choices. This says, you make me smile, thank you. And it comes from Snippets by Penny Black. On the previous card, because I'm very short on my sentiments these days, this is what I had to work with. I did Time to Celebrate, and that comes from, right here, Time to Happy Snippets by Penny Black. For some reason, and I can't quite say why, I just like 
this being offset down on the along the bottom with the clouds and the and the sky above. I don't know why. For some reason, I just like it that way, and I really liked this white Baker's twine. This is a white Baker's twine from Stampin' Up, and I just thought that looked really cute. So that concludes my alternatives, and I will be posting in the video some measurements that I used because I did go with some varying mats size-wise. And let's lay everything out now. All right, I noticed myself slipping off the end of the camera for the final view, so I have reset them up to give a last look. I also added pearls to them. I thought that the pearls were a nice touch. So this is the one that had the Daffodil Delight and Rose Red with seaming tape, which is in white. It is not a Stampin' Up! ribbon, though you can get it from Stampin' Up! in many different colors. I have this in white that I got from my mom so that I could color it as needed. And in this case, I liked it in the white. And this one has some doodling on the letters that are really nice when you look at them up close. It's using the metallic sepia. And I added a few pearls to it. This one is really nice in real life. It's got a lot of texture to it on the clouds. And I like the white little baker's twine. And I just added a single pearl right here up in above the You Make Me Smile. I think this one is my favorite. And then I did a little more doodling here on Friend. This one's actually quite nice as well. So a really fun set. Again, I went horizontal, I notice, on everything. And that's because I stuck with the shapes. This, this particular shape and the long shape, which I only made one of, I see right here, kind of forced me into the, the, the horizontal versus the vertical. I didn't talk about these. I actually did black ink and then embossing over the top to give it some shine and dimension for the celebrate as well as the thank you. That concludes my alternatives for February 2018 Paper Pumpkin. I hope you enjoyed it, and if I do come up with some more designs, I will uh, film them and post them. Thanks for watching. Hey, I just thought of something. As I was packing up for this month's Paper Pumpkin, I had all these little vellum bits, and I realized that it might be something that not all of you crafters know if you're mostly a paper crafter but as a jewelry crafter I always had to buy little tiny jewelry bags for the smaller pieces whether it's findings I've made or splitting things up if I bought a lot or even a finished piece that was very small I always had to have a lot of very small Ziploc bags and I used to buy them on eBay and I would buy them many hundreds at a time, two by twos, two by threes. Uh, I think this is a two by three right now. So I noticed at Michael's a couple weeks ago that up in their bins, they're, they're like dollar bins, they had two by threes and four by fours. So I bought them. And I was thinking they're not quite as cheap as when you go on eBay and you buy them in bulk. But I mean, this is still, you know, like 200 bags probably. And it was $3 for each size. And technically, if you really were on a budget, but you didn't want to go through eBay and you didn't want to maybe pay for shipping or get as many hundreds as you have to get to get a good price, use the 40 and 50% off coupons. Go in and once a week buy each of these size baggies. And then I use them to hold all these little bits and pieces. I even find that the snack bags are just way too big. So that's my tip for the for the month for my paper pumpkin, is to go ahead and save up and use the coupons to buy these little baggies that are at Michael's.